Thank you for watching this video. I'm Wen Chenkai from Northwestern University. And in this video, I'll talk about our paper, Better Concrete Security for Half Gas Garbling in the Multi Incident Setting. This is a joint work with Professor Guo Chen, Johnson Katz, Wang Xiao, and Yu Yu. First, please let me review Yao's Garble Circuit. The Yao's Garble Circuit is a two party computation protocol. It allows two parties to jointly compute function without revealing anything beyond the output of that function. And the, the Yaw's Garble circuit represents a function as a Boolean circuit with AND gates and absorb gates, and encrypts the computation gate by gate to maintain the privacy. Over years, there are many optimizations for the Garble circuits, including uh, coin permute, free XOR, and Garble door reduction. Another important optimization is the half case. It is the state-of-the-art gobbling scheme. And as we know that uh, before, uh, as the gobble circuit has a huge burden on the network communication. Before the half gate, the free XOR technique has made the computation of the XOR gate free. And the half gate reduced the network communication on the computation of the end gate. And uh, it's also compatible with all these optimizations. Another important optimization is the fixed key AES based garbling. It was first appeared in the just garble scheme. And uh, it makes full use of the uh, hardware support to instantiate uh, the hash function in the garble circuit using the fixed key AES. So it reduced the overhead of the computation. And we, are we pay attention to these two optimizations because we find that when the hash function in the half gate is in instantiated with the fixed key AES, there could be a compromise of security. In this paper, we gave a, a systematic study on the concrete security of the half gate. And first, I will show an attack on the current half gate implementations. Then I'll point out where the deficiencies are. And it is direct, directly caused by the inappropriate instantiation of the hash function based on the fixed key AES. And also there is a lack of concrete security on the previous papers. Uh, and uh, mostly they just focus on the asymptotic security bound. And that's, that's also the, a reason that people ignore this attack. Uh, at last, I'll give a new abstraction and a construction of our hash function. Uh, it is called the multi-instance trickable circular correlation robust hash function. Uh, I'll provide a new and a better concrete security bound. And at last, I'll show our implementations and uh, its performance. The weakness of the half gate implementation mainly lies on the fixed key AES based hash function. And in our attack, the attackers succeed in running time proportional to the 2 to the k over c. Here, the k is the B length of the gobble label, and the c is the number of the end gates in the circuit. Uh, if the circuit generator gobbles the circuit with 8 bit label and the the number of end gates in the circuit is 2 to the 40. Then this circuit can be completely broken. Uh, and the, uh, the, run, the attacking time would be within several days. And if we run the, the attack in the cloud, it would just cost several dollars. And the circuit with the label B length of the label 128 and the, the number of end gates 2 to the 40 has only more than 80 bits security left. Uh, and we actually implemented our attack and the, the results of the attack is consistent with our analysis. And also this attack can be extended to multi-instance case. It means that when the adversary receives more circuits, uh, it can apply this attack on all of them. And there would be a higher chance for the adversary to break one of the circuit. Before we uh, step into the details of the attack, let me introduce the half-gate protocol. Uh, in the half-gate protocol, there are two parties. One is the circuit generator and another is the circuit evaluator. When gobbling an end gate, the circuit generator will prepare the uh, labels for each wire. For example, in, each wi in this wire, uh, WA0 is a zero label and WA0XOR is a one label. 
And uh, this R is a global delta. It's a correlation between two labels, and uh, it's, it makes it compatible with the free XOR technique. Um, then, uh, then the circuit generator will uh, construct a garbled table consists of TG and TE. And then it sends the garbled table to the circuit evaluator. And the circuit evaluator at this time has two labels for the input wire. It, it will use two, these two labels and uh, the garbled table to compute the output label of, the, of this output wire. And here we need to pay attention to these two elements. One is the TG in the garbled table. It's a linear combination of the uh, hash of the uh, zero label and the one label. And uh, another is the WA label in the input wire. Uh, here is the details of the attack. After the evaluator received the TG in the garbled table, it can compute the WA which equals to TGXO, uh, the hash of WA and J. This J is a gate identifier. Uh, it's just a number uh, indicating which gate it is. And uh, uh, it equals to this. And PB is just a random bit. So there is a one half a chance that PB will equal to zero. In this situation, uh, this turn is canceled. And, and the HA equals to the hash of WA, XOR, and J. To look into more details, we need to know how this hash is implemented currently. Uh, it's a little bit like the uh, MMO uh, compression function, except this uh, this pi now is the uh, fixed key block cipher. It means that it has a fixed and a public key. And the uh, K is the combination of input X and the gate identifier J. So uh, in detail, this HA equals to uh, this term. And uh, here, uh, the evaluator knows WA label. It knows circuit identifier, and it knows this uh, block cipher. Uh, the only thing that the, the evaluator doesn't know is the R. Uh, so if it happens to know a W star, where the hash of W star, which uh, according to the impl implementation of this hash function, equals to this HA, then it can reverse this turn and uh, guess the R. R is, R is the thing that keeps the privacy of this circuit. If the circuit evaluator knows the R, then it can break the whole uh, circuit. So for, e and the, for each end gate, the evaluator knows one of these, knows one of these pairs. Then uh, for the whole circuit, the evaluator can uh, collect all these pairs and uh, make it into a table. And uh, here is the, what, how the uh, attack goes. The, the, when the evaluator is controlled by an adversary, the adversary will randomly generate a W star. Then it puts this in this uh, hash oracle. Uh, and uh, the oracle gives an output of this H star. Uh, then it will check if this H star happens to uh, equal to one of the HA here. If it does, there is a chance that it can it can reverse the turn we just seen and uh, uh, gets R. Then it, it will just break the whole circuit. And we actually implemented this attack. Here is the result of our implementation. From the left figure, we can see that uh, when we uh, collect more number of end gates, it would take. Uh, the adversary less queries to the oracle. It means that it takes the adversary less time to break this circuit. And uh, uh, it means that the larger the circuit is, it e uh, the easier the adversary will break this circuit. And at the right side, uh, it is uh, uh, we, tried the, we tried to break the circuit of different B lengths of the labels. We tried at most uh, for a large circuit which has uh, bit, uh, labels of 6-4 bit and it just takes it uh, a couple of hours to break it. If we interpolate this line and when the bit size of the label is uh, 80, uh, we predict that it will, it will take just uh, 200 and 67 machine months to break this circuit. 
Uh, and uh, if we run it in the Google Cloud, it will just take uh, around $3,500. And because this uh, attack is highly parallel, if we set out more machines, for example, 267 machines, well, we can break a circuit in a month. After knowing uh, what this attack is like, it's time to think about how to fix this problem. Uh, the, the first problem comes from the fixed key AES. Because uh, the key is fixed and public, the, the adversary can continuously query the oracle, uh, do the brute force attack, and uh, guess the pre image or the hash values. Uh, the second problem comes from uh, the lack of the concrete security bound. The asymptotic security bound is not solid uh, because the uh, circuit size can be very large. And uh, the first step we need to do to get a better concrete security bound is to design a new abstraction for the uh, half-gate protocol, and which can guarantee that uh, the concrete security of the half-gate protocol. Uh, the next step is to design a new hash function which can satisfy all the security requirements from the abstraction. This is the abstraction designed for the new uh, half-gate goblin scheme. It's called multi-instance trickable circular correlation robust hash function. It takes three inputs. The first W refers to the input label. The second I refers to the gate identifier and now we call it a tweak. The B uh, refers to that random bit. And uh, clearly it models the use of the hash function in the goblin scheme. And the output is the hash of WX or global delta R with the tweak I and the linear combination of the global delta. And the security definition of this hash function requires that these hash functions should be indistinguishable from the random functions. And uh, there are two additional requirements for this hash function. First, that we assume the attacker is given U instances. Uh, because our attack applies to the multi-instance setting, so we take it into consideration. And uh, another requirement is that the queries of this form should be called for at the most a few times. Uh, and uh, it also means that this tweak can be used for at the most a few times. This is the hash function that we designed in the sense of the abstraction. Uh, it's called MMOE. And, uh, it has two inputs. The first input X is the input message. The, the second input I is the tweak. Uh, here the sigma X is a linear automorphism. Uh, it has two properties. It is linear if sigma X X or Y equals to sigma X X or sigma Y. It is also it is also automorphism if uh, sigma X itself is a permutation. And uh, at the same time sigma X X or X is also a permutation. Uh, there are many ways to realize uh, linear automorphism, and we choose one that is simple and friendly to the hardware support. Uh, here, the E is modeled as an ideal cipher. The key is uh, this tweak I. It means that every time we change this tweak I, we have to do a key scheduling for this E, uh, which is the ideal cipher. Uh, it's different from the previous insecure implementation, where uh, they used a uh, fixed key AES as a random permutation. Uh, and uh, they, they just have to do the key scheduling one time before the goblin. After the design of the hash function, we embed the hash function back to our abstraction and derive a new concrete security bound. Here, the new is the maximum time that a trick I can be reused. And P is the number of queries the adversary can make to the ideal cipher E. And the Q is the number of queries that the adversary made to other oracles. And this row is the entropy of this global delta R. And uh, it's, it, it, this security bound can guarantee the concrete security for the single instance case. But when we consider the multi instance case, uh, actually, this mu can. Uh, contains a little uncertainty because uh, when the gobbler gobble the circuits, it can uh, gobble different circuits. The it, it can use uh, it reuse this uh, tweak for multiple times. So this mu can be as large as this u. 
So uh, how do we fix this problem? And uh, there is an easy way to do this. Instead of starting this gate identifier i from one, we can start it from a random point. Uh, we uh, for every time when the circuit generator generates a new circuit, it generates a random point and uh, start this tweak from the random point. And then there is a low chance that uh, uh, this tweak will be reduced. Uh, and this can be proved using the both and beans game. Putting all these efforts together, we can derive our ultimate concrete security bond. Here the mu is times that uh, tweak can be reused. It has been bounded by the starting the tweak from a, a random point. And p is the, uh, the number of queries to the hash oracles. And uh, c is the total so total number of end gates in the circuit. And k is the bit length of the labels. And the l is the 128 because we instantiate our hash function using the AES 128. And, and uh, now even regarding to the uh, practice, uh, this bound can be negligible. From that bound, we can get two important uh, instructions for our implementation. If we got both circuits with 80 bit labels and the total number of the end gate is less than 2 to the 43, then we can get 78 bit of computational security. If we gobble circuits using the 128B label and the total number of end gate is less than 2 to the 61, we can get 125 bit of computational security. At last, I'll introduce our implementation and performance. As a reminder, this is how we construct our hash function. And this is a pseudo-random permutation, so we implement it using the AS128 with the AES9 instructions. And uh, this sigma x is a linear isomorphism, and we implement it using the SSE instructions from Intel. Uh, and uh, because it's a keyed random permutation, so we have to do the key scheduling every time before we call it. And uh, it, costs, it, all, it will cost some time, so we, we find that uh, Grong has uh, efficient implementation of the batch key scheduling in their CCS15 paper. And using their method, we can batch eight key expansion together and uh, maximize the efficiency. And this table shows uh, the original half gate performance and our new protocol's performance. And we can see from the uh, security side, uh, we enhance the security from the 89 bits from the to the 125-bit bit when uh, we use the 128-bit label. And for the efficiency, when the network bandwidth is uh, limited, uh, the performance are the same uh, because uh, in this situation, the network is the main bottleneck. And when there's enough uh, network resource, uh, our implementation is just 35% slower than theirs. And uh, after this paper is published, we further optimized it. Now it, these numbers are 20. So in summary, we enhanced the security, but uh, made little compromise on the efficiency. And all of this code has been published in the EMP toolkit, and this is a, uh, this is a link to the uh, codes. And also there's a link to our full version of the paper. And uh, that's the full content of this video. Thank you.